Welcome into Provo High School for KSL Sports Rewind's Game of the Week as we've got our Region 8 opener, the Provo Bulldogs, preparing to take on the Timpanogos T-Wolves. Thank you for joining us, everyone. My name is James Stewart. Please be joined by Andrew Blanchard. Coach, it's the Region 8 opener. Both these teams have been really strong in their non-region, but they kick off Region 8 play here tonight. Yeah, I'm really excited to be able to watch Timpanogos. They've had a great time in, in preseason really been playing at a high level. I've already had a chance to watch Provo, and they've got kind of a three-headed monster that uh, in the post, on the on the perimeter, really excited to watch them play in their region opener. You talk about Timpanogos, they're 11 and two on the year. They have some impressive wins, including one over Bountiful. They're coming off a nice win uh, over ALA. They had lost to Juan Diego, trying to get things started on the right foot here in region play. Coming into a region opener on the road, what would you say is one of the keys in getting your team focused for a region opener? Yeah, you know, it's they're going to have the butterflies going tonight. And so to start your region opener, you want to start it in a, in a good light. You definitely got to focus on your transition defense and being able to rebound. And if Tim Pinocus wants to win tonight, they better limit turnovers and be able to be shot makers. Coach Engel in his first year has done a fantastic job. A couple double-digit scores. This is a very deep scoring lineup, including some multi-sport athletes. We'll see how that plays out here on the road at Provo. Meanwhile, for the Bulldogs, they come in at eight and five. They got off to such a strong start. They beat Tim View here at home in overtime, and they've got a really dynamic kind of stretch player in Jason Carter, complimented by Aaron Castagneto. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was able to watch them play against Harriman this year, and uh, those two are exceptional players. Uh, the big is just somebody that can go jump hook. You've got to be able to bring the double if you don't have size inside. And that is an advantage for Provo, the 6'8 length of Jason Carter. He'll be in the center circle to tip it off. Provo in their whites, Timpanogos in their road navies as we got the T-Wolves and the Dogs ready to go to battle here on KSL Sports Rewind. Tonight's game underway. Want to let you know the clock you see on your screen, unofficial. At times we start it early, stop it late, that sort of thing. To keep it true with the clock here in the building. First possession for the T-Wolves. And we've got an early call here on the aggressive D there by Provo. That was called on Castagneto, I believe, his first. Oh, sorry, they said out of bounds, my bad. Here's Livingston, talking about a multi-sport athlete. Luke is one of them, had a fantastic football season. Is this taken away? Provo on the run and taken back there by Jack Johnson. Well, you know, a lot of people talk about the old school matchup zone from Provo. Um, I was able to see it earlier. It's going to be tough. you got to be able to limit these turnovers for Timpanogos on the road. You hear people talk about matchup zones. For our viewers, dive into that, Coach. Explain what that is. Yeah, you know, actually when I talked to Coach after our, the Harriman game, he said, hey, it's not a matchup zone. But basically it's a switching defense. It's an over-helping area. Nice follow-up there is Makai Allen able to so score. As, as guys are going through, they need to be able to check people off, communicate, and then they're just going to switch every ball screen and every interaction. Boy, Provo really aggressive defensively. Castagneto now running the floor, trying to go up and under, is fouled on the attempt. How about Provo's defense looking strong here early? Yeah, it's already created. It looks like two turnovers there. And so, you know, if Nogus wants to be able to compete tonight, they've got to be able to get the ball into the middle and, and become shot makers and creators. Livingston called for his first personal there. We'll send Castagneto to the line. And the uh, senior guard making the first. What an exceptional talent. Um, a guy that can do it all, can shoot it from the three, get to the rim, uh, shooting better at the free throw line it looks like as Provo takes 2-0 lead or 4-0 lead. Yeah, it's, it's a Provo team that really relies on a couple guys for a majority of their offense. Aaron's one of them, 72% from the line. He makes them both on that first trip. And how, how about Carter coming in? Boy, you gotta love the tenacity of the big 6'8 senior. Yeah, you know, sometimes it, it starts off this way on the road, starting your first region game. You just got to be able to, to fight through this and, and get, the, get the ball in the bucket. 
How do you help settle a team down when the opposing team in their home building is so aggressive and fired up? Yeah, I think it's team leadership. You've got to be able to have good team leaders out there that can keep poise and be able to, to communicate with the younger players as well. Jason Carter there on the score. This is the first foul of the game called here on Provo as it is Makai Allen picking it up. Timpanogos feels really unsettled here early, don't they? Yeah, they, you know, they haven't had a good look at even trying to get inside the three-point line right now. So they've got to come up with some good solutions and not have so many deflections. Coach Chris Collinsworth looks like he's ready to get back on the floor. Boy, he is down and trying to cheer on his D. Another dual possession. Yeah, wow. I wouldn't want to play against him even now. <laughs> uh, just watching him in high school uh, at Provo High. Just a just an absolute beast. Six, what a six, six, six. Yeah. Point forward. Just an amazing player when he played. I covered him in high school. That's how old I'm getting, yeah. Coach. You're getting up there. Yeah. Another turnover. Oh, and Provo just gives it back. Never mind. Up to Castagneto. And that was last touch by Timbinogus. A frantic play to stay here with the dogs. So you'll see uh, Timpanogos doing a little 2-3 zone out of bounds. Looks like they'll stay in the zone and not match up. Castagneto, that three just off the mark. Transition offense going to be important for the, the guests here. Is that a way you can kind of find your offensive rhythm a little bit is trying to get out on the run? Yeah, offensive foul. Yeah, it's a lot easier to be able to get your offense going when you run the floor and you're able to not have the defense set up. Jack Johnson called for his first personal, second team foul on the Wolves here in this opening quarter. Well, one, two, two, kind of trying to milk the clock down a little bit for Timpanogos. Here's Castagneto, Carter able to seal that. He'll pull up, that shot missed, Livingston with the board. You know, it's funny to see how many, how much a one, two, two or a two, two, one has now come back into the game now that we have a shot clock. It's kind of nice to see more mix-ups on the defensive end, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. The shot clock has certainly changed the game here in Utah. It's been, been for the better. For and that's the better. coming from a stall coach. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you recognize it. Most stall coaches are like, oh, I don't stall. Yeah. The Provo offense is installing. Castagneto hitting the three. It's 9-0. Timeout. Timpanogos as the Bulldogs have sailed out to a 9-0 lead here in the first quarter. We'll step aside, time out, T-Wolves. You're watching KSL Sports Rewind's Game of the Week. Welcome back, 4.52 left to go here. Opening quarter, Dane Stewart, Andrew Blanchard with you, 9-0. Provo leading Timpanogos, what a start for the Bulldogs. Coach Ingle taking the time out. Coach Blanchard, if this is you, what are you telling your troops to try to get a little more settled here? Well, I just tell them it's a long game. It's 32 minutes. You're, you've got a lot of game left. We just got to be able to get some shot attempts. Right here, I'd look to try to get some kind of thing in, inside or a back door. Well, kicks Looks. to the corner. That three, no good. Nice job tracking down his own board. Johnson on the floor again. And we have a timeout. Yeah, Tim Benogas taking the timeout there to save the possession. Wow. Well, you don't want to waste too many more of those. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're anticipating this to be a close game, uh, you know, Brian Alfer used to teach me when I was a head coach at Copper Hills, point or, or timeouts at the end of the game are worth points. You really want to try to keep in your back pocket at least three timeouts going into the fourth quarter. And I'm kind of surprised because they have just expired two in the first three and a half minutes here. Does that send any signal in terms of how important they feel like the next four and a half minutes of this game are? Yeah, I mean, that kind of shows you how important this next possession is. Yeah. It's important that you get on the board so that you're not going down double digits on the next possession. So Tim and Ogus will have it here baseline. That's always such a tough call. Those scrum plays and granting timeouts. I know there was, a, we did Provo Timview here a couple weeks ago and there was a similar play. It was uh, hard to call. Oh, there's a nice bucket off the inbound. First points of the game for Tim Ogus. Yeah, once you see that ball going into the, into the net, you start to feel a little bit more comfortable like you remember how to play basketball again. I look, I look to see Tim Ogus 
as well coached as they are, they'll be able to, to bounce back here in this first quarter and be, make it more competitive. Castagneto called for his first. Johnson short on the free throw. The rebound secured by Provo. Castagnetto, we haven't really even called Carter's name on the offensive end yet. Yeah, Tipinogas change into a 2-3 zone. They're just going to try to pack it in and make the Provo be shot makers. And, I mean, you talk about pack it in. You had three guys there around where Carter took that shot as Tipinogas gets the clear. Yeah, you know, for Provo, you want Carter to get a little bit closer to the rim so he can use his height for a push hook. Nice runner there by Jack Johnson, who's starting to find his offensive game tonight. Across the timeline there with a second to spare. And here's Aston kicking to Allen. Good ball movement there. They try to get it out. It's Johnson with the deflection. Other end, McQuiston. Really good traveled. D. Jackson McQuiston was a young man I was looking forward to watching tonight. He's lit up the box scores in the early part of the season. See them trying to work inside there. I love him being aggressive. I just couldn't get a shot away. Yeah. And this is going to be the second foul on Jack Johnson. So the young man with both field goals tonight for Tiffany Logos now with two personals. You know, I wouldn't be Andrew Blanchard if I didn't complain about the officiating. <laughs> you know, we're already two fouls in. We don't have to get to the double bonus every single quarter. You know, those kind of plays. I'd love to see our officials just let that one go and let's play basketball. It's good, good to know that you haven't abandoned your roots <laughs> since you moved to uh, other pastures of life as uh, Provo here on the inbound. They did bring in Livingston for Johnson, but it's worked inside to Aston for his first field goal tonight. I agree with you, by the way. Yeah, you know, just what I've seen with the rule change and having five fouls here at the end, you know, each quarter, every time you're getting in the double bonus, every quarter. Yep. I, I haven't seen very many quarters where you're not in the bonus. And I actually feel like, for good or bad, it is incentivizing defenses to play a little more physical, a little quicker, Yeah, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. We've seen that from Provo tonight, and it's led to runouts and fast break opportunities as here's another steal garnered by the Bulldogs. You know, and I, I'm just, maybe it's the old fashioned in me, but I like to see a one and one making a kid get up there. Yep. That first one's scary. That, you know, having it be a double bonus makes it really easy to make free throws. I think it really impacts the strategy as well, right? Where you no longer can put that pressure on a shooter as Provo here taking a timeout. And Coach Collinsworth here, I believe, signaling a full. So, uh, nope, 30? Yeah. 30 second timeout. We'll stay here. We want to thank our sponsors who make this stream possible. Heidman Associates is a full service law firm. Locations along the Wasatch Front. To find the law office nearest you, visit utah.law or give them a call at 801 472 7742 for a free consultation. Also, want to thank Igloo Outfitters. If you're doing anything outside, you're going to want your Igloo Outfitter. You're, it's the warmest apparel you'll have that you'll find. It's phenomenal. Visit igluoutfitters.com, I-G-L-U, and to rewind for $20 off your igloo at igluoutfitters.com. Provo basketball, two and a half to go here. Opening quarter, third, or 11 to four, the advantage here for Provo. As Finn Powelson will inbound. I really like to get the ball to Carter here. Maybe off this pick and roll. Get him a look inside. Get that to Aston. Carter on the floor now. And the dual possession arrow will keep it here. We might be seeing a, a school record in jump balls. Uh, we've got three or four. We're six <laughs> minutes in. So this will be Aston baseline. Allen, quick trigger for three. No. The backside board gathered by McQuiston. Mesmer. Works here to Johnson, who's back on with the two fouls. McQuiston from the corner won't go. 
And a foul here is going to go on Carter. Yeah, those can be big fouls. You want to try to keep him out of foul trouble if you want to be able to compete tonight. He is such a big piece to their team. He's got to be careful not to get too many here in this first quarter. Two to go here in this opening quarter. When there is such a size advantage like Carter has, is that a magnet for additional calls, do you think? You know, sometimes it is. Uh, a lot of times it's where if the kid is a little bit bigger and thicker. But, you know, he's, he's, Carter's pretty clean. He, he yeah. keeps his hands up. He's a pretty solid defender um, and, and block shots. He can do it all down there. Allen called for his second. So the sophomore going to have to come off the floor here. Is McQuiston good on the first? He's got one more. Another Coach Blanchard, Pat Peeve. Why can't we get two guys on the, on the line, get an offensive rebound? I'm yelling at my, my kids all the time about making sure we get people on the free throw line, get rebounds. Well, maybe McQuiston doesn't need rebounds because yeah, he just makes miss. them, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Skipped out. Orchard for three. Gary Orchard able to hit the Provo three. Carter coming over, gets the deflection. Here comes Finn. Yeah, those, no? those turnovers this quarter has really hurt Tipanogos yeah. and being able to compete at a high level. I would guess they have five or six. It's been quite a few here in this opening quarter. Yeah. That foul on McQuiston, his first, as Gabe Graff has checked in here for the T-Wolves. Two three has bothered Provo a little bit, and and as they're extending a little bit out of their zone there. Here's Powelson, nice little junction jumper there for Finn Powelson. Best place to go right there at the high post. Find a window and hit a jumper. Well, Great play there. Especially if they're going to double Carter, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean sometimes in these region games, other players got to step up if they're getting doubled on on main players like Carter. Harris sends out to Johnson inside. Little fade away from McQuiston. That's a nice touch. Little southpaw fade right there. Pretty solid. Powelson, little bit of space. And that three off the mark. We'll go back to Tippinogus. You know, it's been about three or four possessions before, you know, since Carter's touched the ball. I really think he's got to have the ball in his hands a little bit more, even just to pass out of the middle in that 2-3 zone. I wondered how Tim Benogas would try to deal with his height, but if you're bringing double teams and being really physical with them, it's been a good recipe for them defensively. Absolutely. Shot clock turned off here for these final 11 seconds of the opening quarter. Johnson, and yeah, traveling violation. They turn it over. Another first quarter turnover for the Wolves here on the road. Got to go quick here. Yeah, Aston across the timeline, that pass deflected. And it will go back to Timbinogus here with oh, 1.8. Wow. Well, if you can sneak a three right here and cut this deficit to five, that's going to make you feel a lot better about your first quarter. They get it away, but that is short, and that will do it. First quarter in the books. Provo, a strong start here at home in the Region 8 opener. They lead to Minogas, 16 to 16-8. You're watching KSL Sports Rewind's Game of the Week. Present the Tim Minogas basketball. Dane Stewart, Andrew Blanchard here with you. Let's see what Tim Minogas has in the second quarter. Tough first quarter for him. Well, Still within striking distance. You know, great play there. Good post move, move on the dribble spin. You know, Timpanogos against, against the matchup needs to have a little bit more movement that goes through the, the paint. They're kind of playing side to side. And look, Timpanogos, I think defensively, that was a great first quarter, right? Yeah. Because they've been very active, seen a lot of traps, and even that one leads to a turnover, a rare Provo turnover as the uh, T-Wolves will have a shot here to get to potentially one possession.
Yeah, most of my experience coming against the matchup is is ball screen. They're just going to switch it. So you've got to be able to, if you're going to ball screen, you got to turn that corner and be a, a threat to score. Castagnetto threads that double team, uh -oh. sends over Orchard for three, his second of the game. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet shot. You got to make sure you get out to him, making his second, I believe. Yep. And he's just a sophomore, youngster here for Coach Collinsworth. Yeah, when I watched Provo earlier, I did not. He did not play in the game that I watched, so it's good to see that he's he's coming along. Well, I thought Castagnetto might be whistled there, but Tibinogas keeping this alive as that heads out, and it will be last touch by the T Wolves. We're letting a couple things go on that possession potentially, yeah. huh? Yeah. Well, you know. I don't think it's going to hurt in the, in the long run, but Timpanogos with another turnover, second turnover of the quarter. You see that trap come over immediately. Carter trying to dribble out of it. So hard to trap a 6'8 dude <laughs> right? that's, that's a little bit taller than the others. And that one was deflected, but last touch by the T-Wolves. You know, talking about doing that Provo Timbu game, Orchard had a great game there. He didn't score a ton, but, man, he did a lot of little things defensively and offensively that really helped Provo in that game. The sophomores been good in this first half, but been strong this year for Collinsworth as Timbinoga's coming away with it. Yeah, it's always nice when you can get youngsters into the game that yep. are, are playing confident. Corner three, that was short. Castagnetto with the board. The attempt there from Livingston. Six minutes to go here, first half. Tipinogos has been tough on the defensive end. Oh, Look out. Third one. Ooh, Orchard just missed. Livingston ahead. McQuiston from the corner, fouled on the three. And it will be Jackson McQuiston working back to the line as Orchard called here for his first personal. Coach, can you describe the emotion on the bench on a foul three-pointer? <laughs> now, this is a family program, so. Yeah, yeah, it's not a good emotion <laughs> defensively, yeah. but you like it as an offensive player. Those are tough because you got to give somewhere, the, the shooter, a, a place to land. And so, you know, he kind of came into his space there. You know, I hate to be this guy, but back in my day, there were a lot of twisted ankles. You just had to run <laughs> off, right? Yeah, you better you better walk, rock it off. Yeah, you sure. talk about that landing space. That's a, not new to these players, but that's not how it used to be. That's for no. sure. As McQuiston goes two for three. This one, two, two really has slowed the pace. Yep. Nice move by Orchard baseline, drawing the contact. And it'll be Gehrig working his way to the free throw line. Yeah, just got to be quick to not give up, you know, a, a straight line basket drive when you're in a trapping situation. So they've got to be able to hustle back and, and scramble to defend. You know, we talked about Provo, the start they had to the year. They beat Tim View here at home off to such a good start. And then a surprising loss to Box Elder, who's really started to, to find themselves. And then coming off a loss against Wasatch Academy, first time they've lost back-to-back -back games the Provo Bulldogs, and with this being the region opener, obviously they would love to start back on the winning side of things as Orchard makes them bowl. Well, they're well on their way defensively to, to have a good night. A lot of dribble. I'd love to see some more passing and cutting through the zone. Well, and there's not a lot of movement, right? Yeah. I mean, everything kind of stagnant. But this call, boy, the third here on Allen. Oof. He'll have to come off. Yeah, that's a, that's a big uh, break there for Timpanogos to have him not on the floor. He's such an exceptional talent. McQuiston, little jump stop, defended by Aston, works out. Graf trying to work his way through, and that is all ball, dual possession. The arrow gives it back to Provo. Yeah, Carter just man in the middle. It's tough to want to go in there and try to score over him. Substitutions, Josh Graff and Jack Johnson both coming back on the floor here for Timpanogos. Hey, 
So now this is where they got to scramble and get back so that they don't give up those open looks to good shooters. Castagnetto short, long board, tracked down by Orchard. Oh, nice vision inside to Carter. Great pass, good vision, good finish up high for Carter. Livingston works to Udis. Graft giving to McQueeston. Shot clock approaching 10 seconds to go. Johnson on the baseline drive. Cal the bucket. Good take there by Jack Johnson as the foul here called on Powelson. Great drive off the baseline, finishing high off the glass. Great take. Tim Benoga is just with two players in the scoring column tonight. McQueeston has eight, Johnson with six now. Yeah, they're going to need some more help if they're going to want to compete tonight against the Bulldogs. You know, it was pretty interesting because doing my prep, it was kind of the inverse situation. Provo, not a lot of depth scoring. Timonogos, good depth scoring, and it's been kind of the opposite in this first half here tonight. Yeah, Provo's moved the ball really well. Orchard on the three. That was off the mark. That's the look you want, though. You want the ball to get in to, to one of your best players in the paint and then let him make those decisions when doubles come there come his way. Oh, McQueeston left on unmarked as he's able to hit that little turnaround. Nice yeah, stretch little, here. Little pin down screen comes off, little miscommunication and gets a wide open look right there on the elbow. Got to get it across. Ooh, Ooh. just does. Powelson, uh, walked with it, yep. You know they say, don't you? Guilty feet have got no rhythm. Thank you, George <laughs> Michael. Powelson caught there, turns it over. Yes, sir. Important possession right here if you want to get back in this game. This was 11 just a couple of minutes ago, and again, Tim and Ogus with a chance to get it one possession here. Yeah, same play as last. They, they communicate better on the switch up top. And a foul here on the reach, going to go on Aston. Yeah, you want to try to avoid those, those types of fouls because you're in the double bonus on the next foul. That's right. That was the last foul to give. Meanwhile, Tim Benogas just one foul here in the second quarter. Nice little backside cut. Won't go offensive board, maybe, on the floor. And a traveling violation will give it to Provo. The timeout now being taken by Provo. So timeout, Bulldogs, they'll have it when we come back. You're watching KSL Sports Rewind's Game of the Week. Provo basketball. Timpanoga starting to pick up the pressure, going a little bit more full court and taking some more gambles. And really the defense has been very intense for Timpanoga all night. Yeah, you know, they're very intentional in being active hands and scrambling really well. Castagnetto tried to step inside. <laughs> he even replays it there. Yeah, I might agree with you, young man. That was a tough one, tough call. So that's pulling Andrew Blanchard out of his chair on the sideline back in the day. <laughs> yeah, just might have, might have. <laughs> He's living soon, working to Johnson. Carter trying to collapse down there to potentially help. Left McQueeston, who has it. That shot just rims out. He's been living kind of on that mid-range jumper, too. He's, he's, it's the first one he's missed, really. Graf there called for his first. Josh Graf, the senior. Can we do a shout-out to Timpanogos coaches wearing a suit? Right. I mean, let's bring that back, can't we? Izzy used to do that as well, didn't he? Yeah, they look good. Aston with the finish off the turnover. But, yeah, it's the whole bench. Yeah. Yeah, you know, those days are long gone. Right. Wearing shirt and tie. Oh, Great nice. Deep. Yeah. Provo have numbers if they can hurry. Johnson able to race back defensively. Powelson hanging. No contact there. As this batted around, Carter coming away with it. Castagnetto. 
able to dissect the defense and lay it in. So crafty to the rim. He can score in a, an array of, uh, of ways, be able to scoop score, floaters, Euro steps. Really talented player. Johnson, well, that's a tough shot. Orchard there defensively is Carter with the rebound. Let's get out and run here a little bit. Powelson, boy, had some space. Instead, we'll kick it out. Castagneto, the three. Don't, don't let him heat up. He can be, he can put him in droves. And just like that, a 7-0 run put on here by Provo. Pushes it to 13. The answer won't go. Garrick Orchard with the board and went to the floor. He'll turn it over. The fall down travel. If you can teach me that rule, I would love to hear it because I don't know what the rule is. Like, when is it a dang travel? Because so, it's always different. What I was always told was two feet on the floor established. Any other part of the body hits the floor to travel. Now, I might not be wrong, but forearm, elbow, any of that hits the floor after two feet are down, that's a travel. That's what I was always taught. Okay. I don't know. If that could be wrong, yeah, but that's I, what I was always like taught. Like I said, I have no idea because it changes. Miscommunication. Castagneto won't go. That's what teammates are for right there. Yeah, you always want to have a guy cleaning up at the end and transition. Little jump stop won't go. And cleared there by Graf. Tough possession there. Really could have extended the lead if... Yeah. Finishing at the rim, uncharacteristic for him. Here's Livingston. Tim Minoga seeming content to potentially take the last shot. 15 seconds left in the quarter. Luke, little step back for three. Luke Livingston. Bench wanted to push off, they don't get it. One second left, Orchard throws it up. That'll have too much on it, and that will do it. 30 to 20, the lead for Provo at home. They lead Timonogos. You're watching KSL Sports Rewind's Game of the Week. Start of the second half, 30 to 20, Provo in the lead. They've led for the duration of the game. Timonogos had pushes to get back to five or six. Haven't been able to get any closer. Dane Stewart, Andrew Blanchard with you. Coach, if you're tipping Ogus, the defensive effort has been there. Offensively, what do they have to do in the second half to get back in this game? Yeah, I'd really like them to, I'd like to see a little bit more movement and being able just to control pressure. You've got to be able to handle pressure in region games and not have turnovers. They had way too many in the first half. Nice swing, sets up McQueeston. That's a big time three for their leading scorer. That's the way you want to start, being able to stretch the floor, make them come out and guard you from the three-point line. 13 for Jackson, he leads all scorers tonight. He's got a sweet little shot, you yeah. know, a little lefty. I always loved coaching lefties at Copper Hills. Is a, you know, one of my favorite types of players. So hard to guard. Allen back on the floor, just missed that shot. As Tim was getting the clear. Here's Livingston. Coach Ingles sticking with his man-to-man -man regular offense, it seems, um, which can work. It's, it's basically just a switching defense, so you just got to anticipate those switches. And that's one where Powelson reads that so well. You talk about the anticipation. That ball's kind of coming out programmatically. Probably fortunate that they're able to maintain it here. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's a hard read when you don't know which defender's on the guy. So something that you've just kind of got to get used to as you're playing during the game. Shot clock was down to four, had to put it up. It is rebounded there by Aston. Powelson. Uh-oh. Oh, nice find to Carter. Jason Carter. Carter Helps. was slow to get down because yeah. he fell down, but it, it worked to their benefit. Absolutely. Hustled down and finished up high. Timonoga is able to keep this alive, but then they give it up. Allison had Castagneto will work to Carter. And a foul. You know, with Timpanogos and, and their turnover issues early, you just want, you, you know, your goal as a coach is to be, limit your turnovers for the full game to be below 10 or 12. We're already well above that now, yeah. so we've really got to try to hone in on not turning the ball over. Well, and it really could be a lot worse is 
three from Powelson there won't go. Rebound by McQueeston. But you talk about 10, 12 turnovers at this point. This could be a much larger deficit for Tippinogus. Yeah, you know, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I would imagine that Provo's got at least 10 extra shots than, than Tippinogus does. McQueeston missed that three. Livingston puts up the little runner, yes. And that's one thing that can really help Tim, Tim Pinogas as shots go up, really crashing the boards and trying to get offensive rebounds. There's a foul here going to be called on Livingston. That'll be his second. Well, that's where it feels like the last couple of possessions, Tim Pinogas taking a lot of threes. They relying on that maybe a little too early here? Yeah, you know, if they're going in, everything's great, right? Yep, but, yep. you know, if they're, as they're missing strong, you just want to make sure you still got to shoot open shots. So if you're open, you got to shoot That's it. That's fair. However, you got to crash the boards. You got to have all five guys trying to get a board, maybe four guys. And as a, as a team, they shoot 34% from beyond the arc. So they, they've shot well from long range. But how about casting Nettle there with the crafty hands? He's on the run. Yeah, bad spacing from Timpanogos. And Carter on the follow again. That's what I want to see a little bit out of Timpanogos in, in a little bit more transition, trying to push the ball up the floor to get them so they're not set. And a Ooh. blocking foul here called on Carter, but that is close. You know, I always have a problem with 6'8 guys taking charges. You know, you already have the advantage. You're there squared. Let's just go block the shot. It's Sometimes these charge calls are 50-50 calls, and when you're 6'8", you have the advantage when he's coming to the rims. It's, it's tough. A lot of coaches like the charge, right? But to me, it's 50-50 sometimes. So here'd be my question. How would you coach that? Because I feel like when you're coming over for that block, if you're going to get him with body anyway, you're going to be called yeah. for that foul. So that's why I kind of not push back, but just curious you know your thought on that because if you can get positioning there and take the charge do you have a better shot at getting the call well i think i think the problem is is you're forgetting your castagneto with the three a six a six one guy may be the case but as a six eight you can kind of retreat instead of meeting him at the spot you can block him at the rim nice play there Inside, Provo. I think that was by Graf. Provo going a little, little. Looks like Timpanogos back to their 1 2 2. Provo can get some easy looks here if they move the ball and use pass fakes. That was deflected, found its way to Pallison, looking to drive here. Extra pass to Castagneto, little fake, Aaron the three. No. And the rebound gathered by McQueeston. It's a good look. He likes to drift to his left, and he's really good at that shot. Mesmer working inside. Udis, oh, nice turnaround away from the D, but couldn't get it to go. Yeah, that was a good move down low. Allen. Oh, an offensive foul. And that's going to be the fourth on Allen. Coach Collinsworth, not a fan. I don't blame him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of charge calls, but you know, that's a big one because that's his fourth, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, it's gonna sit him out probably close to the six or four to six mark in the fourth quarter. And there's a little arm there. Yeah. But boy, enough for a charge, that's that's a tough one. Yeah, you know, coach is pretty frustrated about that for good reason, but you know, you gotta be able to move on next yep. play. A little cross screen, down screen action for a three. Massimo Can't left hesitate. open. Oh. Ogus has not been their best game, but man, they continue to battle and stay within striking range. Yeah, you know, you can always tell a well coached team when you're not playing great, but you're still be being able to compete. And hopefully, you just hope it clicks in by the fourth. Well, that's a crafty move by Castig Meadows. A timeout taken here by Timpanogos really had to as the contact sent McQueeston to the floor. So that'll be the third timeout taken here by Timpanogos. Good. Co coach uh, is going to have to try to get out of this quarter without any more timeouts. 
if you're going to be down eight, you really need to have timeouts at the end of the game. Like I said earlier, they have to have them to be able to stop the clock after they make a bucket when the, the ball's on, you know, the yep. clock's under a minute. So interesting, we talk about the three-point shot. It's been in favor of Provo. Only one made three in that first half for Tippinogas, and it was the last bucket of the half. It was Livingston who made it. They've hit a couple here in the third. Wondering if they're maybe starting to find their range here as they try to crawl back in this one. Yeah, you got to shoot them to make them, and, and Tippinogas is going to do that. As long as they have guys crashing the boards, I, you know, you got to like the, the strategy. Up with Mesmer. Looking for Graf there, or for Yudis, my apologies. Here's Johnson. Shot clock down to 10. Goes back to Mesmer. Provo still switching all screens. Little floater, McQuiston. Nice touch again. Wow, what a really good take there. Saw Carter coming over to, to get a contest. Little floater over the top with the lefty. He does have really good versatility to his game, doesn't he? He absolutely does. He he's shown a lot of a lot of three-point opportunities, mid-range, and scoring at the rim. Oh, and a foul called here as Yudis thought he got all ball. I think they might actually call the body there of Yudis, but it will send Powelson here to the line. Two free throws here for Finn. Yeah, home team can't miss free throws in the second half. Got to shoot at a high clip here. First one good for Finn. Makes them both. Back to Mesmer. Gavin into the paint, trying to step around Carter. Nay, nay. There's your block, coach. Yeah, great take. He's got to be careful not getting the technical off talking trash there. He's too important to this team. Yeah. Sometimes you got to let him know, though, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> well, the block definitely let him know that that was loud. Here's Johnson, seven on the shot clock. Mesmer knows it, five seconds left. Lost his dribble. Got to get it up, they don't. The Provo defense able to win the possession back. Yeah, those, those are huge momentum uh, drives for, for Provo. When you get stops, 35 second shot clock violation, you are starting to feel pretty good about yourself and your def defense. Castagneto for three. There's that little lefty drift pull up. Four Great three shot. of the game for Castagneto. McQuiston, ah, couldn't get it to go. And we've got a dual possession here. Arrow will give it to Provo. School record jump ball just completed. <laughs> I ran out of count, I only have 10 fingers, so. <laughs> We should have tag teamed tonight. We still yeah. might be running out of yeah. fingers. Yep. Tipinogas needs to start a little bit more scramble here, create a little bit more chaos defensively to get back into this game. Powelson, that's off the front of the rim and a loose ball foul here. You can kind of see those arms of Graf push yep. off as he was going to gather. The third on Josh Graf. Hey, guess what, coach? 14 foul on Tibinogus. Yeah, we're getting, we're already there. I know how much you love bonus situations. Yeah. Big fan. Oh, a little slip. Love the play. Good action. Being able to cross screen for Carter, up screen to the slip. Just couldn't finish it. Yeah, it was a good look there for Aaron. Livingston back with Mesmer. Going double post for Timpanogos. Another block for Carter. Tapped around, finally gathered by Aston on the run. 
So Akai Aston started it and finishes it for Provo. Yeah, it was a tough finish. Maybe a little contact too, but really good finish for the young kid. 12 second differential, game clock, shot clock. Oh, it's a good, good pass. It's a good seal off the backside, no backside help there. Easy points for Tippinogus. Shot clock turned off. These final 20 seconds, that oh, one found its way oh, to no. Castagneto. Oh, Oof. that was on target. Orchard nearly came up with it, but whistles here. And we've got a foul call. All right, we'll see who this is on. Orchard will work to the line as they're going to give it here uh, to Gabe Graff, his second. Two free throws here for Garrick Orchard. Hit a pair back in the second quarter. Garrick was the second leading scorer for Provo at the break. Ah, oh, missed it. 11 seconds left. It showed ball screen the last end of quarter. Looks like they're going to isolate. Livingston off the foot, works over. Curtis has to put it up, and that'll do it. Three quarters in the books. It's a double-digit lead for the Bulldogs. 47, 35 as we head to the fourth and final quarter when we come back. Start of the fourth quarter. Tim Benogas basketball. Well, the offense just hasn't quite been there for the T-Wolves tonight, needing to find another level here in this fourth. Yeah, you know, they've got to have a little bit faster pace here. Not a lot of, you know, obviously start the fourth quarter, still a lot of time, but we got to, can't milk it down all the way to zero on the shot clock. Boy, tough shot, Castagneto getting the block there. Well, it looks like they're going to roll the dice with Allen here and bring him in with four fouls starting the fourth. He's got to be careful not to pick up a cheap one. Carter trying to split that double team. He draws the contact. Is this foul called on Mesmer? That'll be his first. You know, the, the amazing thing tonight when you look at this group, Jason Carter only has eight points, and yet you've got a double-digit lead against the team with the best record in non-region play in Region 8. Yeah, I think maybe his his biggest impact in this game is just clogging the paint. Yep. Just being a presence where no one wants to go in and get blocked. Well, he's got several blocks tonight, several rebounds as well. Been a good defensive presence. You can just tell how well coached Provo is. Everybody on a, on a gap lane, help side, communicating. It's the only way you can run this switching defense and make it work is if you communicate and you're well coached. Livingston will pull up just inside the line, won't go, and the loose ball foul. This will go on Gabe Graff. That'll be his third. What a difference a coach can make. Coach Collinsworth has this program treading in a completely different direction. This. It doesn't look like Coach Drury, but the status of the program, winning, good defense, looks like Coach Drury, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, you know, you can take, you can tell he's taken a lot of principles from Coach Drury, but he's had a lot of other really good yeah. coaches that he's been able to tap into. It's such a luxury for some of these guys. Offensive foul there on Carter. I think the offense is more dynamic. Yes. And some of that you're forced into that. We talked about the shot clock, its impact. The defense is stout. Yep. And, uh, man, he's doing a heck of a job here as Carter there picking up his third. You'd like to see Carter get there and just get to two feet instead of one-two on his jump stop. Here's Livingston. Trying to go back to that high post action that he's had about six points on. Johnson on the drive, wrapping around good, Carter, won't go, and that's going to be number four on Jason Carter. Yeah, that that's that's what they've needed all game is being able to challenge Carter at the rim and make them make a decision. Now they've got to look over there and go, okay, what are we going to do? It looks like they're going to go small and sub him out. 
And that's the thing, to your point, right? You have a big in there. Do you attack it or do you let it take you out of your stuff? Well, kind of the first time they've attacked it. Yeah, you know, this, this is going to be an important two minutes as Carter is probably going to sit one or two minutes here, depending on the score. This is going to be really important for Provo to maintain their lead with their big center on the bench. As a coach, how did you manage that? When did you bring your big man back in? Well, it depends if you trust your big man or not. I've had a lot of good big men, but they've liked to foul a little bit. Trevin Alfrey, <laughs> dang it, Trevin. Uh, you know, sometimes he'd get in foul trouble. So at about four minutes. And an offensive foul called on Josh Graff. His fourth. They say he cleared him out there. A costly turnover again for Tiffin Ogus. Yeah, I think, you know, I think that's going to be the main thing that Coach Ingles is going to have to, to correct if he's going to be successful in region is just being able to throw the ball to, you know, the same team. Long Deep three. three, yeah. That ball pinballing around, finds its way to Allen, blocked away by Mesmer. Gavin's been good tonight in the second half. Yeah, he has been good. Up screen to the elbow. Looks like they're going cross screen, down screen again. Oh, that, that was there for a steal. <laughs> yes, it was. They've got to anticipate on those down screens. They're going to switch. Not really attacking the paint here. No, you know, a lot of cross screen, down screen action against switching defense. If you're not going to slip, it's not going to keep them honest. Powelson there able to stay vertical and defend enough as Provo will take a timeout here. Five to go. Timeout Bulldogs. Fourth quarter. KSL Sports Rewind's game of the week. Five to go. Provo basketball. Oh, that one given up. McQueeston. Boy, somehow found its way through, but too strong and Carter with the board as he's back on the floor here with four. Yeah, he, did, he only sat him for a minute. He wasn't going to take much much uh, time where he's going to sit the bench. You know, those out-of-bounds plays are the ones that will kill you as a coach. You know, you call a timeout, you turn over. Luckily, they didn't get a point on it for Provo. Livingston works to McQueeston. Uh-oh. High shot. arm, sends to the corner. Uh -huh. Not three long. Gaff to McQueeston. There you go. Timpanogos needs to ramp up their intensity here if they want to get back into this game. Just not enough possessions without creating some turnovers. Here's Castagneto. Oh, and that shot was left short. That's what he'd love to have back. Yeah, really good take. Gets the two feet. That was on the line. Graf able to keep it alive. Good hustle there by Josh. Another three. That is short. Tapped out. And it will stay here with the T-Wolves. Cooper Harris, the six-foot freshman, checking in here for Timpanogos. Where do you go here, Coach? Yeah, it's just tough on what they've, they've been doing a lot of just cross-screen, down-screen. Looks like they're going to go a little little spread and just dri dribble drive that good. oh um, just rimmed out from McQueeston and it will stay here again really good look for Timpanogos there I like that strategy of just spreading them out a little bit Provo's got to get a dang rebound here if they want to kind of turn this this comeback out great oh, D Carter and nearly wrestled away but we'll have another dual possession the arrow will give it to Provo Great D, but that'll give you some anxiety as a coach uh, with when you're one of your best players. He's got four fouls and he's trying to get a jump ball. Yeah, so right. Worked out for the the Bulldogs. Yudas back on the floor here for Tibinogus. Castagneto for three. Coach, we were talking to the break when he sets his feet. Boy, he can be a deadly shooter. Yeah, you cannot let him have those looks. As Timpanogos comes back with a quick bucket. Yeah, nice touch there for Yudis. Starting to ramp up here. 
That pass, Powelson able to keep it and then fouled on that far sideline. And that'll be the fourth team foul on Tipinogos. Castagnetto with 21 tonight. He has five made threes. Yeah, and he's and he's had a few that he wishes he had back. He's had some good looks. Yep. Wide open looks. And he's put him down for the most part. Castagnetto. Good luck. Sends to the corner. Makai Allen hitting the three for Provo. That's when he's in his element, getting downhill and creating plays for his teammates. Amazing pass, really nice three-point shot in the corner. And that foul on Allen, that's his fifth. Just hit that big three, that might be the dagger in this one, but commits his fifth foul, and Makai's night will be complete. Orchard well, checking in. You know, Provo's one foul away to making this thing really interesting if Carter gets his fifth, uh, even with a 13-point lead. That's a great point. McQuiston finding some space and couldn't get that one away. It'll stay here. They say Provo deflected it. If Coach Collinsworth could, I think that he'd ask for a review, but we don't do that here. No, I don't think so. Grab back on the floor here. Livingston works up. Harris, the freshman, takes the three short for McQuiston. There you go. Now he has been tough. He's kept Timpanogos at arm's length, but he's really kind of kept him in the game a little bit. 20 for Jackson tonight. Carter works out. Smart play there. Yeah, he was loading up for a charge attempt. Yep. Castagnetto, Livingston, tenacious D on the floor. Castagnetto has it, oh. 10 on the shot clock. Ahead to Powelson. That all starts with your big getting on the floor, getting a 50-50 ball, not, not afraid to scuff his knees up and, and get that ball. Not, Impressive. Not the biggest scoring night for Carter, but he's done a lot of other things. Yes, he has. McQuiston, little turnaround, blocked by Powelson. We've talked about the tip in Augustine. We have not credited this Provo D enough for their effort yes, tonight. Absolutely. They have done a great job just making it really hard for Tim Pinogas to, to see open looks. Here's Aston. 15 on the shot clock as we approach the final minute of regulation. Provo came in, losers of back-to-back -back games, Carter, and there's oh. the fifth foul. So Carter is fouled out. Eight points. Three, four blocks-ish, and a plethora of rebounds on the night. Yeah, he had a great night, especially defensively. Um, and, and, and offensively, he was great, too. Had some good looks where he caught the ball inside and was able to skip the ball to teammates for open looks. Well, and you know what I love? He's a young man who averages 19 and 8. He never forced his shot tonight. No. Okay, you want to collapse down? I'll kick it out. We saw a number of plays where he's handing that ball off to other teammates. Never forced anything tonight. Yeah, I mean, those types of players are so, it's just a joy to coach. When they're able to just read the defense, take what it's given to them, and not force it, those types of players are so much fun to watch and to play with. 15 foul for Provo, so free throws here for Cooper Harris. He's got a pair. Good on the first. Timpanogos has got to get up full court and really try to create havoc to try to create a turnover. Harris makes them both. How quickly do you foul? Powelson, there it is. 
Yeah, typically you're not going to foul too much when you're down 11, but that's a good foul by, by Tim Penogas there. But you just want to try to turn them over. Game's pretty much over. You want to try to turn them over, see if you can get a three, find lightning in a bottle. So Finn Powelson back to the line. Good on his first. Second was long, but an offensive board gathered by Provo. Castagnetto had it knocked away, but able to recapture it. And an offensive oh. foul here. Called on, on Powelson. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> The Provo students sensing a victory coming. Harris long on the take, rebounded by Alfin. And Provo, 15 seconds away from starting off Region 8 play, 1 0. They say last touch there by Provo. Oh, that was tipped. I thought so too. Mesmer, a little step back. Number three off the mark, batted around. Graf going up and scoring at the horn, and that will do it. Provo started off the game well, got to a double digit lead in the first half, they close out with a 10 point win, 56 46. Andrew, your final thoughts and a selection of our player of the game? Well, I will probably hammer his name, so I'll let you let you pick uh, his name. But Provo, really good game, really impressive def defense, handled the ball, handled pressure really well. Yeah, I would I would go right there. Castagnetto. Yeah. Yeah, Aaron Castagnetto, 21 yep. points unofficially, five made threes tonight, was solid, leading this Provo offense to the 56-46 win. I want to thank you for joining us. Coach, thank you for joining us. It was a Absolutely. pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. We'll have more opportunities to have Coach Blanchard with us as uh, he's got other youngsters he's got to watch over the course of the year, and we'll follow them as well. But, uh, Coach, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. 56-46, your final, as Provo defeats Tibinogas and starts off Region 8, 1-0. and oh. For Austin Bigelow, Andrew Blanchard, my name is Dane Stewart. Thanks for joining us on KSL Sports Rewind's Game of the Week. A reminder, we'll have basketball for you all the way to 5A, 6A state championships only on kslsports.com. Good night, everybody.